the Holy Grail? Fate. Okay. The is it the first one is Fate Grand Order? There I don't know the order. It's like Fate Stay Night or Fate Zero is the first one, depending on like what you're Alright, alright. Hunter, Big which Grand one? Order is the mobile game. Okay, Hunter, which one is the one that has um like uh the the super crazy berserker dude and has the uh King Arthur but it's a girl? Fate Zero. Fate Zero, okay. So, I mean, fate, I, well, that's a lot of them, but yes. probably Fate Zero. Hold on. Let me get them started and I'll let you know. Okay. So, Fate Zero. I watched that in its entirety in English, which was great. How um, does this tie into Pokemon? <laughs> I, I, I'm getting there. <laughs> Trust me, I'm getting there. Again, I'm taking you for a long walk, but it is worth it. So, is this glass of water at least slightly larger? Um, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I appreciate not. the honesty. Now I know what I'm walking for. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, in the... In the short, um, in the short featuring Archie, okay, he has this like where he's going crazy over Kyogre. He has the same voice as the uh, as uh, the, the character. Gilgamesh. Yes. In Fate? Yeah. Yeah. Because all of them are named after historical figures in Gilgamesh, I think, is the Berserker from Zero. I've only seen, like, three episodes of Fate Zero, or, and then I was like, this is impenetrable, and then never watched any more of Fate. It's, it's the, he has the same voice as the one who's, like, super buff with the scrawny dude as his, like, yeah. companion. And he's, uh... Scrawny redhead kid? Alexander the Great. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Anyway, that's not important. I love Smash Brothers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> actually, Oryx and Cheeks are kind of clapping right now. They're Woo! popping off. Cheeks on Crum. I think Crum is a really smart character for Cheeks. Cheeks has definitely been in a character crisis for some time. I agree. Um, uh, not only is Crum like just good for him, Crum is an incredible doubles character. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And I uh, love that Oryx is still on Palu. Crum is absolutely this game's uh, both this game's Falcon and this game's Cloud. Yes. I feel that 100%. Uh, and I God, I love Crum. I think Crum is so cool. I, I hate that people, there's this perception of Krom that he's like this this button masher character. He definitely can be. He pushes a lot of buttons, but he needs to do all of them intelligently, otherwise he gets completely bodied. Literally, like, if you watch the best Kroms, like if you watch Rivers, dude is schmoovin' 90% of the time. I love Rivers Krom he's not so just, much. He's not just button. There are moments where you're like, ha, button mashing, that was funny. But most of the time he's just like, actually just moving around people. If so well. You see button mashing if you have a small brain and pressure. That a is one. That broken. Was gross. So I was, I was talking a little bit about like the concept of that in our earlier yeah. set. With but Ganon uh, Polo. Or not. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah Ganon Polo. So yeah, yeah. when you use that explosive flame as a backup on somebody whose shield has already been like depleted, it is so good. It's like a free shield poke. Uh, and when you have that Ness up smash that just charges and multi hits on you, you just have free pressure. That's wild. It's obviously not something that you could like approach with every time, but like when you get into that situation, it's kind of broken. Yeah, if you if you are on top of the fact that that is happening, that is the fact that that is an option that you have available is insane. Palu is a backup character in doubles is crazy, and Austin being the front man for that is even crazier. Austin, speaking of button meshing, yeah, Austin, Austin, <laughs> really good at holding forward. The world's best button mesher. Mm -hmm. God bless. I will hold that until the day I die. I wish you were wrong, but. <laughs> I mean, yes. There's definitely so many times, though, where he's like, look at him. He's not pressing any buttons right now. He's waiting. See, but it's it's all about saving energy until you can push more buttons. He's conserving his energy so he can button mash harder next time. That's, that's all it takes. That's so tragic. Oh! That was so close. Mm -hmm. Good on uh, good on Oryx for getting in there ASAP yeah. to, to disarm that, because that was so scary for Cheeks. Yeah, that that could have been actually tragic. Okay, back throw is big. Austin can bounce smash. Great high recovery. Yeah, that was very, very, very smart. And the thing is, Austin can't commit a lot of time to covering that mix-up because doubles. What's interesting, though, is... So, I think I learned well. recently, the way that two-framing works is the two-frame is the game snapping you to ledge from underneath. But if yes. you up B to ledge from above it, you don't incur two-frame. So um, maybe if he had gone high right to ledge, it wouldn't have two-framed if he was coming in at the right angle. Technically uh, speaking, that's not true. So the way that it works is you snap from a different spot depending on where you go. So if you go from under, your two frame is way easier. But if you go from above, you just are way further away and at a different point that most people are ready to two frame. Yeah. But like, for example, uh, teleport recovery. Oh my god, the oh. parry! God, that was that whole interaction was very smart from Cheeks. That's crazy. He was, he was, uh, Oryx was pummeling him, giving him time to parry that. He just parries and then gets on the platform, ready with a setup, and then that was that. Yeah. Just really, really smart on, on both of those players' parts. But basically, like, 
So because instead of you snapping from like down here, you're snapping from up here, most of the moves that normally two frame from standing on the stage just don't hit. No, I think it's the I think it's uh the other way around because Joker people were talking about Joker going above the ledge and then letting go of holding down and he'll snap to ledge with invuln. DDD can apparently do it too. People were talking about like, That's oh my just... god, Joker can go to ledge. And I'm pretty sure it's if, if you're going from above the ledge, the game pulls you into the ledge without vulnerability frames. I okay. could be wrong. If I that could be is wrong. true, then they changed that mechanic from four because in four they just snap ledge from above, but it's like it it uh, recenters your character from a different spot. Oh sure, sure. And I know that there was a thing like where if she re recovers from above, she can still be hit in theory by like a lingering yeah lingering hitbox, but nothing that hits just like ledge. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna interrupt the conversation real quick. Just point out Austin's shirt. I feel like I I need to do this every time I see him on commentary, but it's just you've it's done beautiful. the world a great service. It's beautiful. I also love this song. You were asking me earlier today, actually, about my favorite songs in Smash. Yes. Or Wonder Was. Wonder Was. Uh, but this but is one cool. of them, for sure. This is definitely one of the best ones. I don't think that Spanish I Spanish guitar pick... is an amazingly cool so instrument. Good. This and Dark Pit's theme. I love both of those, and that's why the my my uh, title theme for Ultimate at Home is the is the guitar waiting room. Smart. I like that. It's the best thing ever. So we're going... I wish you could set, my, I wish you could set my menu theme to Ring-A-Ding. I wish I didn't have to be in this conversation anymore. <laughs> this is a ring-a-ding stan account. <laughs> oh my god. I would like to block. <laughs> oh my no, god, cheeks. that's so Krom is low tier. Sad. Krom is top three until he's low tier. That all happened because you mentioned ring-a-ding. <laughs> I'll do it again, don't make me. Oh no. And that... I also was talking about this song with a friend the other day. This song is incredible. It's just a bossa nova song in Smash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's been it's been a rough start for Red Team, but they're piling it back. It's pretty even. Yeah. Like slightly on Blue Team's part, obviously, but like not not, not crazy. That was a really scary spot to be in. That that's the that downside of Krom is it, like you said, he's he's the, both the Falcon and the Cloud of this game in doubles especially. Yeah. Like, you can just knock him off stage, and in doubles, it, it, it could be extra bad. But also, because of the doubles environment, sometimes he just doesn't get gifted situations where he could. Yeah. So there's a give and take. Absolutely. But that that leads to, you know, a character like, oh, yeah. Um, but characters like uh, Kromer, tremendously explosive, and Light Cloud has so much ability to be both point and support in doubles. Because mm -hmm. um, Krom covering the space behind you if you're approaching, to, to strangle out space, or Krom approaching you with like Nair with an opponent on backup. Both of those are equally scary. Desly is just not dying. Why is He's he immortal. so good at not dying? Desly is immortal. That's kind of cheating. Unbelievable. I also just realized that he's no longer using the mommy GF tag, and that that, that breaks my heart. Yeah, it just says Desly. It's last not the week, same. Last week his tag was Big Milkers. <laughs> I do, he does have that tag on deck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Desley is so good in doubles. This it's man is a menace. Kind of unfair. Yeah. Hmm. So, well, at this point, Red Team is so incredibly far behind. I don't want to. I don't want to say that. Oh. Oh, Desley, no. He was immortal until he did a dumb thing. <laughs> the only thing that can kill Desley is his own <laughs> is brain himself. Being, being so incredibly big. Uh, that is hurting him. Nothing, nothing is more painful than out big braining yourself, yeah. and then just dying for it. I also always forget that Ness can bounce to recover and then recover until he does it. And I'm like, all right, that's a mechanic in the video game. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Now, cheeks all alone. If any character can, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. No. As you shouldn't. I didn't need to. Everything was said for he me. He just jabbed three times. Like, jab is a very good move. Not when, not when Ness is like, all right, and now I can line up back air. Yeah. Krom actually really reminds me in this game of, like, uh, Bardock and DBFZ. Yeah, no, Still that's a really astute observation, actually. Is, like, so similarly, like, oppressive, and his neutral is, like, like, he doesn't have a good projectile. But he is still incredibly oppressive with the way that he's able to control space on the stage. Absolutely. It's kind of kind of not fair. But when you jab on shield three times, bad things happen. Yeah, there's better 
situations to put yourself in there for sure. Jabbing shield with an opponent on backup is not not one of those good situations. Mm -hmm. So now that was a that was a phenomenal like counter pick. I I don't know if the stage played that much into it as much as it just like complete. Desley's not willingness to die in combination with Austin being mad aggressive. Desley looked at the god of death and said, not today. Yeah. It's kind of wild. I don't know what kind of a... What kind of adjustments Oryx and Jeeks can make here. What kind of stage they'll want to go to. Because there, there's a Palu that's able to play back up on both on both team comps. And yeah. If, if I were to look at this team comp on paper, I would say that in theory, uh, I feel like Krom does pretty well here against the Ness. Because Krom is a more dedicated point. Yeah. But I think the fact that there is a more dedicated point means that they're less flexible. And sure, that, can that makes them. a lot of sense. That can hurt them. Doubles is such an interesting format. It's so wild. There's a lot happening. It's just, it's a lot. A lot happens. Everything happens so much. Desley has had time to scroll through his Twitter. He is he is texting up a storm. Look at that those thunder thumbs. He's going ham. And he has had so much opportunity for this. What do you think he was saying? Uh, you know, anytime I think about what Desley is thinking, I imagine it's not safe for stream. That's a reasonable assumption. That's just... Ooh, we got Peach now instead. Three, two, okay. One. That, I think, is a respectable see. choice. Yeah, because I think it lets them counterpick the other team harder. Because yeah. it lets them focus uh, Desley and how they want to build their, their strategy, both uh, both in-game and on stage. I really um, do like appreciate the, the Palu coming out and Oryx building that character, but he's definitely much more experienced with Peach as well. Absolutely. And now we have like a very clearly defined role of the fortress of Oryx on defense. And Cheeks also is a very defensive-based player, but he's able to, ooh, come through with the moves like that with the Krom. Big button. Both characters now, I think, have more variability on whether they can play front or back. Ooh, Which, okay, like, Austin's to dead. your point from earlier, yeah. uh, really speaks to, um, you know, their their flexibility mm -hmm. overall versus uh, another flexible team comp, which gives them more opportunity to find the things that they need to find. Really good use of the down to catch that high air dodge from Cheeks. And we got still slight lead on the red team, but oh, that's a big damage. Back throw, okay, interesting. Trying to toss to Cheeks, wasn't quite there for it. He was in a, a weird spot where he like had to cover for Austin as well as the throw. I like Cheeks' awareness uh, when he was in the top left, uh, just to air dodge back to the stage instead of chasing Desley all the way out there. Um, knowing that if he went all the way out there, then he's putting himself in a bad position for Austin to follow up on afterwards, where he doesn't necessarily secure the kill from Desley. We're trying to go for the left trump. Doesn't quite work out. Austin's able to buffer his way back on. Oof. Okay, that explosive flame coverage was not great for Austin, unfortunately, because the... Like, he has disjoints in his hands, but he was drifting too far in, uh, too hard in for, like, a, a cross-up attempt. Yeah. Ended up losing him a stock. This is a, a beautiful shift in pace momentum from the red team with this character counterpick. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with their, their adaptation here. Oh. I like that they went for the back here, maybe because he was like, this might hit Austin and this might hit Desley, so, like... Uh, Speaking strictly in terms of how likely it was to hit any anyone rather than the interaction he was specifically looking for, I feel like it was more likely. I haven't mentioned it yet, but we, we said earlier that this is all two out of three. Uh, this is potentially the last game of the tournament if Red Team continues playing like this. Yeah. Okay, but Austin's definitely bringing it back. It's Desley all by himself at 96. This, this is, rough. is scary. Great teleport cancel. That back air is uh, oppressive, but the forward air comes through. Controls all that space. And that's a tournament for Cheeks and Oryx. That it is. They played really, really well. I liked I liked their strategy uh, with Palu. I really liked their strategy with Peach. Yes. I'm, I'm really interested to see how that team shakes out in future. And I'm interested to see how 
Cheeks does on Crom. I would like, I like his Crom a lot. I do like his Crom. I love Crom. He's so Crom's cool. Crom is, I think, the character. Like, as much as I love Joker, and as much as I, I know for a fact for as long as Joker is a character that is good and that I enjoy, I will be a Joker main. Uh, but Crom is Crom's the one like that the I want to get, like, good with. You know what yeah. I mean? See, I feel that way about Ken, which is tragic.